Hello, welcome to a new video. Now because last week's video was all about my new workshop coming up, my new online sewing workshop, so there's lots of vlog clips to catch up on. We've got some memory book journaling, getting the Rayburn swept and cleaned ready for winter. But first let's kick off with an art supplies unboxing, a little art supplies haul. This is mainly Tim Holtz ink sprays and we've got a mix of Distress Oxide and Distress Spray Stains. And I thought I would also test out this craft shop online called Craftelia, which is based in France. And I thought I would let you know my experience with them in case you are tempted to try them out, mainly because they're a lot cheaper than most British craft online shops. So let's start with that. <laughs> So I've got a little heart-shaped lollipop, that's sweet. Stay inspired, Craftelia. Uh, a raffle thing, an advert for a cutting tool, just a little bit of information about the company. Well, that's quite nice. And my invoice with a handwritten thanks, that's nice. So this is what we've got. Oh my gosh, look at all that plastic wrapping. Does, is this necessary? Oh no, okay, so I'm going to sit and unwrap everything and then show you. So the things I can show you straight away are the Ranger Distress Mica Sprays, Tarnished Brass Antique Bronze, and I can't see the title of that one, and it doesn't say on the back. So, and I'd forgotten I'd ordered some washi tape. Yeah, that was on a special offer from Jane Davenport, some pretty washi tapes. They're nice. Okay, I'll get back to you in a minute when I've undone all of this plastic. So here we are, I've unwrapped it all. I mean each of these still has another plastic wrapper so I've got those to get through yet as well. So I've Bought. These are all Tim Holtz Distress Spray Stains, and these are all just oh no, I've mixed them up. And these are Distress Oxide Sprays. So, in the Distress Spray Stains, I've bought Milled Lavender, Speckled Egg, Forest Moss, Iced Spruce, and Picket Fence. And in the Oxide Spray, I've got Tattered Rose. Shabby Shutters, I love some of them, I like that name. Pumice Stone and Iced Spruce. And then I've also got these three, which I have to say I don't remember buying. It's been so long, it's been such a long time. I can't remember what it is I've bought. And on the um, invoice, I can't actually see, I'm a bit, I mean, to me, an invoice should have the name of the product and the price. The price is zero, zero, zero all the way down, so I can't remember, I couldn't tell you the price I paid for anything. And they only bother to type in the actual product for a couple at the top and a couple at the bottom and none of these. We've got numbers so I can reference them, but when there's no price, it's, I don't know, that seems a bit of a silly invoice really. Yeah, anyway, so I also bought Dilusion's White Linen Ink Spray. Now this one, it looks really pretty, pearl spray, but the, the lettering, the word says Fab Fabrica Decoru, which makes me, oh there is some English in the back, water-based spray. Okay, it's designed to work on paper, cardboard, fiberboard, wood, fabric and any primed surfaces. I was worried it was just a fabric, fabric paint, but actually it's not. And this one, Stamperia Mixed Media Aqua Colour, which I don't remember ordering at all, but there we are. Yeah, it's a pretty colour. I can imagine using it for mermaidy seascapes and that sort of thing. And then of course there is those Tim Holtz Ranger Stress Mica Sprays. And these are the Jane Davenport washi tapes, which are just, I don't know, her things just make me smile 
We've got some mermaids on that one. I can see a unicorn's face on that one. Pretty girl on that one. Some writing that says, I'm learning to fly. Oh, I just, I just really do like Jane Davenport things. She's just so uplifting. Adventurous, hopeful, mystical, lovely, magical. So yeah, I'm gonna look forward to using those in my journal. Just a shame about all of that plastic. But then, you know, maybe they've got fed up of people complaining about their ink sprays leaking in post. But I'd be surprised with all the Tim Holtz ones, like I said, they've got an extra plastic packaging that you have to get through as well to open it up. Anyway, there we are. So I placed this order on the 6th of October and it arrived on the 27th of October and there is no tracking information at all until one day before it arrived which is a little bit stressful and you're just busy checking and because it's craft supplies it's art supplies I desperately want to get my hands on them to give them a try and um, it's a bit frustrating how slow it is so you'll have to compare costs and decide for yourself whether you think the weight is worth it if you are using the same supplies the same items all the time and you just know you're going to run out in about a month's time then I guess if you're patient then then it might be a good website to try I'm not sure whether I'm patient enough I'll be honest I don't know if I'll use the company again but though I have to say when I did email to question them they did reply but with the same standard reply that I think everyone gets from what I can see on other message boards because of course I checked them out to check that they were a proper company before I did order from them so I, I did know that they were going to be quite slow but they just get back to you saying sorry we have no tracking until it arrives in your country and I don't know it just seems to get take a very long time to leave Spain and arrive in the UK but there we are I actually don't often buy brand new art supplies at the moment while I'm trying things out I'm often looking for secondhand things on eBay but ink sprays come up so rarely on eBay seriously I'm looking all the time every evening we've got the like Midsummer Murders on or actually we're watching Morse at the moment which is uh, fun I like watching that and seeing Oxford but anyway <laughs> I'm getting distracted uh, yeah, they don't, they very rarely come up. I was very lucky to get that uh, selection of Dilutions ink sprays, which, which were from eBay. So I had to buy these brand new, but it was worth it because I've really been getting into using um, ink sprays for my backgrounds and my art lately. So have a look at past the recent videos if you'd like to see what I've been doing in my artwork. And I'll swatch all the sprays and I'll show that to you a bit later on. Before we continue with this video, I have to say a massive, a massive thank you to everybody who replied to my video last week about help for a name for my sewing workshop. Honestly, I'm so grateful. I thought maybe one or two of you might have an idea and I got loads. It was so helpful. Thank you so, so much. So I wrote it all down in my Threads of a Fairy Tale book, one of many <laughs> notebooks that I, I'm always writing down ideas in and things. I sort of took your ideas, wrote them all down, mulled them all over and sort of played around with some of them. Honestly, they were great suggestions. They really were. And I'm going to be saving some of them for future workshops because I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that I can bring out a few in the future. People are often asking me on my sewing videos for more instructional type videos and so I'm hoping to make this a regular thing, you know, maybe do a big one yearly, maybe smaller ones throughout the year. Uh, this big one is one I'm kicking off with. But so yeah, if you've left a name and I'm not used, if you're left like a suggestion and I'm not using it this time I really might use it next time because uh, it has sparked ideas <laughs> the names have sparked ideas for courses as well and workshops so I'm really excited I really hope that um, this is a venture that works out all right so I'm excited to announce the name <laughs> of the new workshop hopefully coming before the end of the year but I don't know this year is flying it might be end up early next year we'll, we'll see I'm gonna really try and get it out in time for Christmas the name is Enchanted Elegance with Raggedy Remnants so we've got alliteration going on and we've got a bit of rhyming as well so I'm quite chuffed with that it's so hard I really wanted something a bit I'll be honest 
I wanted something short and snappy, but it's impossible. It's just impossible um, to get that description over that it's going to be something. So I've got the word raggedy and it was either ragged, ragged or tatters or something like that. I'm sure people will realise it's from remnants of fabric. I didn't want to, like a whole explanation in the title. I can explain it underneath. If it doesn't make sense straight away, I'll have to just have a little tagline underneath which explains exactly what I mean, what the course is going to be about. Go and have a look at last week's video if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah, so a massive thank you. Really appreciate it. I've got a name. It's done, I can move on. So this week is going to be super busy now. Getting the wording right, I've got to write new um, terms and conditions and that sort of thing on the website and then work out just how I'm going to host this, whether I just do well, yeah, that's all, all boring stuff you probably don't want to know, you don't need to know about that. <laughs> anyway, on with the video. a fairy forest oh my gosh look at what those pink orange that. ones so there's one there look at that wow <laughs> yeah this is an old fairy road <laughs> i bet there's still i bet there's still a carriage and horse that haunts this lane oh, yeah Look at this! Someone has been busy and there's two more up there as well. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Oh, they've even put like little seats in. Oh, I'd love that as a child. Yeah. The whole playground. Oh my goodness. This was such a lovely walk. It really is nice to get out in woodland, go a little bit further afield than home because we live in an area that is mostly farmland. Everywhere is cows and just grass or crops. I look out my window and there are a lot of trees but actually finding woodland to walk in is quite difficult. And that is such beautiful old woodland as well. There are some areas that have obviously been planted in rows for management but uh, there are other areas that are quite ancient and uh, and if you're in the area if you, it's just uh, past Wells towards Bristol and it's called Stock Hill Woods if you are fancying uh, a magical woodland walk I would recommend getting a um, ordnance survey map actually for the area because there are loads of footpaths I want to explore it more thoroughly because there's old you go towards Priddy and there are old um, Roman walls and ancient Iron Age field boundaries and all that sort of thing. So it's quite fascinating. Oh, I've just looked up in <laughs> the viewfinder. It looks like I've got a, a flame growing out of my head from, from a dress I'm in the middle of repairing. <laughs> oh well, it brightens up the room though, doesn't it? <laughs> Um, actually, now that we're back, I'm having a really lovely, cosy Sunday. I've just cooked a cauliflower broccoli macaroni cheese, which I haven't done for ages. I haven't had one of those for ages. Used to, I used to eat them a lot. <laughs> yeah, so that was really nice. A nice sort of wintry, what's it called, Com comfort food type meal. And now I'm doing my journaling. Um, 
filling in all the gaps on my illustrated journal. I don't know if you've seen this before, but I've been doing it all year since... La oh, I have just realised it's been a whole year. It was last September I started it. What's the first date on here? Don't count the first. Oh, no, it's been longer than I thought. 28th of August I started it. So, um, yeah, it's been going a while. But there's lots of, like, little gaps <laughs> that I've got to fill in draw with drawings. And uh, I've got some stickers. And just making it look, you know, f finished. I'm hoping that by the time Christmas comes around, I will have finished the book. I've only got a few pages left. Oh, is that showing on camera? I think, look, those are the only pages I've got left to fill. And that would be just nice to get that up to Christmas. And then I could do illustrated journal slash sketchbook, memory book. I think that's what I was going to call it. Sort of sketchbook tour in the Christmas holidays. That would be quite cool. So yeah, and I've got um, got my pens here. I've got my pen colouring pencils here. But actually what I've been doing, because these were originally in a pencil case in the drawers, and I've been sorting out some of my art supplies and craft bits and I'm creating I've got more storage for that corner and that's also and I'm decluttering a whole load of stuff. I'm finally getting around to it. So yeah, that's just my little update for today. I hope you're having a cosy day, whichever day it is that you're watching this. Yeah, I'm gonna carry on. I'm watching some art tutorials and and then I'm gathering with the kids to watch Strictly to catch up. We haven't watched any this year. Let me know in the comments if you've been watching Strictly Come Dancing. And is it a good year? Because some years I get really into it and I watch the Saturday programme, the Sunday programme, sometimes they even watch most of the It Takes Two programmes as well. And but and then other years I just don't seem to get into it very much and I sometimes just watch the Sunday programme with the catch up, you know, it shows you all the little clips that happened on the Saturday and I don't really watch the full dances apart from the the two uh, dance off ones. So um, yeah, is it is it good? Are you enjoying it if you're watching it? Because uh, I haven't watched any yet. The problem is when you miss the first few, it takes a bit longer to get to know who the celebrities <laughs> are. Yeah, because it's nice to know what they're like. It's nice to have a little peek into their normal personality when they're not acting or presenting or whatever it is that they do. Well, we left it as long as we could, but it was getting very, very cold in the evenings and it was time to clean out the Rayburn, give the chimney a good sweep and start lighting our Rayburn to keep us warm for the winter. Um, it is our only source of heating. We don't have gas central heating or oil central heating. The Rayburn has a back boiler and that's supposed to heat all of our radiators but it doesn't hear anything upstairs at all at the moment. So I need to go in the roof and uh, check the water is filling up all right in the tank. And I really don't want to do that because it's very spidery in our roof. It really is in the loft, attic, whatever you call it. Um, so I'm really, I'm really putting that off, but it is a job that really needs doing. Thank you. I need a new brush. Yeah. <laughs>
thing. Oh, there we are. I won't say clean because I haven't given it a wash clean and I want to run these covers through the washing machine but we are now all ready to go ready to burn I meant to show you the clean the lovely inside oh, the lovely clean firebox but um, I'm sure you're not really interested in that but yeah that's probably the best it's going to look now until um, this time next year <laughs> looking forward to getting warm cloud I've never seen anything like that in England that's well, weird like that here, yeah. yeah I like weird clouds <laughs> oh. it looks just like a volcano with all the spurt spurting out the top so I've tried to keep you out the wind so you don't get the wind noise because it's quite a breezy day today but I'm around an area where I don't normally show you I try and keep this out of shot I'm down by the shed and um, have to make room have to clear out so behind me here is the woodshed behind me here is the shed shed definitely need to make space for the woodshed because everyone's trying to heat their homes with wood this year so we need to try and stock up a bit and fill that up and also the uh, chair the bench that came out of our dining room needs to go in there for protection over winter so let me show you what we're dealing with <laughs> So this is it, and actually this, <laughs> believe it or not, this is a vast improvement over what it was. I still need to do something with that hose pipe. I might just put that on free cycle actually, because we don't really need that one. Already filled the bin up pretty much with just stuff and rubbish that was there. But I'm gonna go and get the brush and dustpan and neaten this up a bit better than, than it is now. Oh, and, and by the way, uh, this is where I'm starting to gather some kindling bits. I'm also going to fill this old water tank with kindling as well and also I may as well show you now but I don't know if I'm going to be finishing it in this video this area next to the shed yeah that needs tidying up too <laughs> I'm just on a bit of a quest right now to try and get the house and garden looking normal <laughs> half decent it's a lot of work and effort but we're getting there that's my catchphrase we're getting there <laughs> All summer long, I said to myself, I need to collect kindling. I need to collect kindling. <laughs> oh, I'm so cross with myself. I didn't really bother. And we actually burnt a lot of stuff on the big bonfires that we had because we were just on a mission to clear the areas that we wanted to clear off the driveway. Potentially we could have cut that up and left it to dry and used it. And oh, I don't know. It's one of those things where is the effort worth it when you can just buy kindling you know the time it takes but i did save one fallen rowan tree that fell in the storms that we had last spring that's where i was snapping off some twigs and sticks there to uh to keep lighting the fire because one thing we are changing now with the way we use our rayburn is we're not leaving it banked down overnight which means we're not stuffing it full of wood so that we can just relight it again in the morning quite easily or just just stoke it up in the morning to get it going again in, instead i'm not lighting it until about three or four in the afternoon depending on whether it's been sunny or not 
and then we just let it go out when we go to bed and that just keeps us just about warm enough <laughs> and uh, provides enough hot water for a bath so that's that's saving us a lot of money on logs actually but it does mean because we are re needing to relight it every day that we are desperate for kindling There we are, not bad for a few minutes work. All fire lighting supplies like dry paper and cardboard packaging, that sort of thing. So that is something I've been busy with and I haven't filmed most of it. I've been cutting up lots of old willow sticks and stuff like that ready, ready for the winter. And as I'm filming this, I've already gone through most of it. And that means that stick, this sticks out a bit less into the garden now, which is useful. I need to come back down in different clothing to cut back all the bramble so I can get to the rest of this and chop it up for, for good starter wood. It seems a shame to waste it, so we should use that. But while I'm out here, I've realised there are apples to be picked. But I've got quite a few that are just this size. You know, you can see there how small they are. Do you know what apples they are? Are they cider apples? Are they worth me picking and stewing for a pie? Because by the time I've peeled them and cored them, there's not going to be a lot left. Um, sadly, some of these have got scorched by the bonfire that we had, but we've got tons of them. But we've also got some beautiful, pretty crab apples. I mean, look at these. They are so pretty. So we've got some like peachy coloured ones on this tree. And we go round and then we've got these others that again they're just very very small now is it just that the tree hasn't grown very well because look how small they are and then we've got some more crab apples over here these are yellowy ones and then and i haven't seen these before but look we've got these beautiful R bright red ones. I think those are new this year. I definitely haven't seen those before. They're so pretty. I'm so pleased with that. So if you're wondering what I did with all of those apples, well, I made apple cake. <laughs> yeah, I, I cooked loads and loads of that apple and most of it's been for my breakfast. So I've been really enjoying warmed apple, warmed stewed apple with a sprinkling of seeds and nuts on the top. And that's what I've been having for my breakfast. And it kind of feels like I'm having pudding or like apple sauce or something for breakfast, which is quite nice. <laughs> But I also made apple cake because my sister was coming soon and I also had friends over again. Yeah, <laughs> big pat on the back for me. I don't know if you saw my social anxiety video at the end of summer where I had friends around for the second time ever and I said in that one that I thought it was about time it changed and that I had people over more often. Well, I did it and I was hoping it was going to be easier this time, actually. I thought, I've done it once, I can do it again. It's different, slightly different group of people, some crossovers from uh, a group of us that we sing the tenor part, or sometimes alto, sometimes tenor part in, um, in choir. There's a little bit of crossover from them to my book club that I belong to and there was one person that um, overlapped both groups so they'd been before but everyone else was sort of new and hadn't been to the house before. Yeah I think actually that just made me just as nervous as I was before if not worse actually I don't know but I <laughs> cleaned and cleaned and cleaned once more and didn't feel too embarrassed to have people over and conversation was just was flowing lovely and it was lovely to have them I have to say that the only thing that was really sad was one of our number was leaving them they're, they're moving away from the village so it was a little bit sad as well but um, I think apart from that it went well oh excuse me a sec I just gotta let the cat in 
Oh, he's gone straight to a spot on the windowsill, that's good. Oh, and by the way, I know some of you do comment saying you like seeing all my decorations and things out. I've got a couple of clips. I find The week before Halloween, I finally let Jude get the Halloween decorations out of the loft and we put them up around the house. Okay. So here's a little clip of me swatching the sprays in case you're interested in the colours and because there's a massive variety to choose from with Tim Holtz ink sprays so hopefully this might be helpful if you're trying to choose between them. Okay, well I took the dog out uh, while I waited for it to dry and uh, now it's too dark to, for natural daylight so I hope the colours are still going to be fairly accurate for you. So it was really interesting and worthwhile doing that because I now know that the, because I've got two of the same here, iced spruce in the Distress Oxide and also in the Distress Spray Stain. So it was useful to see that actually, to see the two different colours and the way it is. I love actually the chalky finish that you get with the oxides. It just offers a, an alternative to using these which is much more like the dilutions I've been using. But still I would say more speckledy. <laughs> Do you see, you know, it's not an even spray. You still get like dots of white but you can see it particularly in the milled lavender there but i like that i like that it makes it interesting so i'm happy with that the mica spray very sparkly and some nice colors there that dried a much nicer color than it came out it's quite orangey when it came out yeah also the bronze dried much nicer the other one i would say this one the one i don't remember buying <laughs> the stamperia aqua color it says it's water-based but I haven't compared all the ingredients but this is quite quite different to the D Tim Holtz spray. First of all it's a much wider spray look it comes right out there and there's no way of getting that spray smaller so you you know you've got to know you want to cover a large amount of, of space. <laughs> I can't find my words. I always get tired after a walk. Also paler which is actually I like I, that's what I, I was looking out for paler colors and, I, and it's a pretty color I'm very happy with that one thing I would say is that it smelt funny it smelt like like if you're walking into a room where someone is using actual spray paint so that is worth bearing in mind I don't know if there's some chemical in the in the Stamperia one that the Tim Holtz doesn't have there's no smell whatsoever to the to the others and nor to the dilutions which is also Ranger, so that's probably why there's probably quite similar ingredients. So interesting that. I'll find out as I paint with the, you know, use them as backgrounds and use them in my paintings, how well they mix with water, what effects you get when you spray water on top and that sort of thing. Um, I'm curious to see whether this one is more permanent and maybe that's why there's a bit of a sp smell there's something in the binder or something that makes it a bit more permanent but anyway hopefully that's helpful if you're considering buying any ink sprays I'm really really happy that I discovered these <laughs> and here's a picture I've started of Scotney Castle I've used some a couple of the ink sprays in the background I'll show you a bit more when it's finished um, this is very much the beginning of the picture but yeah it is quite different to using the dilutions inks they don't blend with water nearly as well as the Dilutions ones. There's quite a different consistency, much more chalky. This is the um, Oxide sprays, by the way. I haven't tried using the spray stains in a painting yet. 
so that's exciting. I do love trying new art supplies, it's good fun. <laughs> That picture will be up in detail, the whole process of it will be up in detail on my Patreon page. And by the way, if you haven't heard of Patreon, as I haven't mentioned it for a little while, it's like a magazine subscription. So every month you receive extra content, Usually you get two videos from me, sometimes three, sometimes even four uh, because I've got, if I'm busy doing lots of things, I just film it and if I've got the time to edit, I'll just put it on Patreon along with lots of behind the scenes pictures and just chat, chatting amongst you. It's, it's a really nice little community and I only have one tier, it's five pounds a month, nice and simple and that gets you everything I offer. So do have a look at patreon.com slash Helen Hobden if that takes your interest and all the money I earn there also goes into supporting this channel it goes straight into the cost of running a YouTube channel really and uh, it is very very much appreciated so I'll end the video here because I expect it's getting quite long but I've still got more catching up to do in the next one so I'll try and bring it out a little bit quicker and so we can catch up on ourselves and I will see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching, take care, have a great week and I'll see you again soon. Bye!